Love and Marriage Huntsville, Season 6, Episode 11. So we're back in the office with basically the combat group, and they're still going back and forth about this Black Expo thing coming up with Tisha and Marcel. Morris is like, y'all are repackaging this whole thing. This is definitely the combat group vibes. Why are we just not calling it that? And Maurice is like, basically, everybody should be involved so that it's under the umbrella of combat group. They keep acting like they don't know Mel just went through this crazy divorce with Martel. They keep acting like it, like everybody keeps forgetting that this was traumatic. Hell, they're still in court as this crap is going on. So why would you think she wants to work with her ex? And Mel is looking at them like, it's baby steps. You guys, a whole bunch has happened since the last time we met. The fact that I'm sitting down here is like something. But they obviously want her to speak because Mel has a whole bunch of followers. She's a great orator. I mean, Tisha and her comparatively, she speaks much better. I mean, Kimmy is also a good orator. So I would see why they would want Mel involved. But they keep acting like they don't understand why she's hesitant. Like it is obvious her ex-husband is in this group who has been nothing but toxic to her. Now when they come to the group, he acts like everything is all Gucci. And I'm like... No, nigga, we're still in the court for custody. I can't change my name because of you. Like, what part do you guys don't understand? And I don't know if by this time she had already heard about the S tape that he was trying to um, do revenge porn on for her. So it's a lot of nonsense, but they keep acting like, oh, Mel, why don't you just go along to get along? And Mel is like, nah, bitch. And she puts on her bag and she's like, I'm out. And in the confessional, they're like, well, we could do without uh, Mel. And Tisha's like, well, Maurice wants all or nothing. And he's really passionate about that stance. Maurice wanting all or nothing is insignificant. Mel has already said, I want to be out of this group. There is no benefit. She's not finding taxes with this group. Why are you guys still? Well, perhaps it's just a storyline. I'm giving myself a headache. Then the next scene is Mel and Miss Nail trying to do the stripper pole. And Miss Nail came with her nasty tights on, ready to drop those thighs down. <laughs> on Mr. Fletcher and I was like okay and she's asking Mel the questions we want to know who were you on, on Instagram with because if you're going to post it then post it with your full chest don't give us like breadcrumbs and don't give us the whole full like slice of bread so she's you know skating around not really trying to talk about it but it's funny to have Miss Nell again along because Miss Nell this season has been a little questionable but it is what it is Oh, I feel so happy for Mel. She's talking about basically provider protection, things that she wanted in a relationship. She said she did not <coughs> realize how much she did not feel protected while she was with Martel. It was like sleeping with the enemy, which it feels like that because no matter, like he broke up the relationship. Let's get that out the way. But he acts like she did something wrong to him. And he wants to retaliate, which is scary. But he not only wants to retaliate, he wants to destroy her while at it. So I get what she means, like she feels protected, she feels like this guy is going above and beyond what she even manifested for. And I'm going to use that spirit of manifestation over my life because I am looking for a man. I'm searching. But anyway, back to the show. So she's telling Nell, and you can see how emotional she gets. She said she even cries because she's like, oh my God, God is basically blessing me. I didn't even think it would happen this quickly. I'm so happy for her. Then we get to Tisha and Marceau. This argument is weird to me because, okay, they're renovating their other house. But he wants to stay over there as opposed to staying in their new rental because it's taking longer and he feels like it will save on cost. And apparently 10 years ago, something similar happened. And she's like, you and my son are not going to have a bachelor pad and this and that. I'm like, why are we having this conversation? Like half of America renovates their homes like every other day. And they don't have to live in a separated like lifestyle. Especially, I think Marcel keeps fucking with her because he knows... That there's all these rumors about him cheating. Why would you even suggest that you guys live apart just because you're doing a renovation? And their current property is not that big. It shouldn't take that long if the funds are funding. So I'm like, he's like, well, this is going to come out from your pocket. This and that to sacrifice for the relationship. This should have never even been a discussion, sir. Like, what are we talking about? But it's Marceau being Marceau and Tisha is trying to put her foot down. We'll see how this plays out. We finally get to the Stormy and her <clears throat> family scene. So, remember the, the cousin she fired or let go weeks ago? Apparently, his mom heard that he was let go from her sister. 
and the sister went in there all guns blazing miss betty is very annoying they need to get rid of her they got rid of wanda it's time for betty to go and she goes in there talking about she will whoop a 29 year old's butt and the mom is like whose butt are you gonna whoop and the mom rightfully is asking whose business is it is it stormy's business or is it betty's business because betty is coming too hot and betty's like all the things you did for junior da 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 then she brings up i guess maybe stormy pay, paid his bill that was fifteen thousand. the junior's mom also threw it out there that stormy went to jail herself and it's like the fact that stormy had to stage her house for this meeting to happen is ridiculous like y'all cannot have a rational conversation but i guess they are putting on for the show but we about to see and these women are about to like go blows to blows like i cannot do it not today satan this is a whole mess stormy's auntie storms out junior is like he's fed up basically and betty has no real issue she's talking about you're a condescending prick to junior this is why his mom says don't come at my son crazy you are not his mother you cannot tell him things like this which is true like junior is actually more respectable than i think i would be if you're cursing at me and being really ridiculous and she's laughing when um junior's mom brings up stormy's um arrest history and even the woman is pissed that she even brought it up but she's like you're not about to play my child on national tv and stormy's mom is there laughing and stormy's like why are you laughing what is funny about this the lady runs out crying stormy goes after her tells her to come in that her mom is still going crazy courtney is giving out water like water is gonna make things better like stormy's mom is the toxic person she needs to be gone talking about blood doesn't have to be thicker than water and i'm sure she started acting this new when stormy became a millionaire because it doesn't make sense you're like fighting a stupid ass battle that doesn't have to actually happen stormy's family is a whole hot mess like the, her mom is going below the belt the auntie is all emotional apparently when their grandpa got sick it was Stormy's mom that was like in charge of taking care of him and since then their relationship has dysfunctioned the auntie comes in talking about don't worry you don't have a sister you don't have to worry about me and Stormy's like what is going on it's not even that deep y'all are causing a rift between me and my cousin's relationship we grew up like brother and sister and now two of you don't even want to get along like what the hell this is a whole mess it was a pivot next week looks like a, another mess because we see Maurice blaming monster's mother which is his ex-wife and i'm just like nigga you begged for this boy to come live with you it's been five years or whatever in the most influential time of his life if anything is wrong that's on you but maurice can never take accountability so i can't wait to hear the nonsense disputes next week but yeah guys that's all my review like subscribe let me know what y'all think bye